On today's cook here on the Grillin' with RVH patio, we're gonna go country style boneless pork ribs. My wife made mention, oh, about a week ago, week and a half, she said, you know, you haven't cooked country style ribs lately. And I said, you know what, you're absolutely correct. And I've never cooked them on the Masterbuilt 1050. I've cooked them on the old Rectech and I've cooked them on the old stick burner and I think I've cooked them on the Blackstone, but I've never cooked them on the Masterbuilt 1050. So today, boneless country style ribs on the Masterbuilt. I marinated them overnight in some World Harvest Jamaican jerk seasoning, or marinade, excuse me. Really good, it smells really good. I've used it on some other things before, it comes out really good. I've used it on jerky, etc. Really good flavor. And you can find it at Market Street slash Albertsons if you have those in your area. So I marinated them overnight in the jerk, uh, Jamaican jerk marinade. I took them out, placed them in the pans, and sprinkled some Blackstone teriyaki seasoning, as well as some Sucklebusters Tex-Mex gold, I believe it's called. Just phenomenal, or it might be Texas gold. I'll put a picture up so you can see exactly which one. But I've used that on some chickens I did uh, about a week or so ago, the chicken leg quarters that uh, I may or may not have done a video on, not sure. But uh, I seasoned them with that. So I'm really kind of seeing, want to see how those two seasonings work with the Jamaican jerk marinade. They may complement them, they may not be great. So we'll see. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to put them on the Masterville at 225 for about, I think it's three to four hours. We want them at an internal tip, internal temp, excuse me, of 185 to 190, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them about 170-ish, and then I'm gonna take them off, and I'm gonna put this thing up to about 600, crank to 600, it gets there quickly. Um, I love this thing, it's the ease of a pellet grill, and it gets the searing temps a lot quicker than a pellet grill does. So, anyway, 225, till I get to an internal temp of about 170, crank it to 550, 600, put them back on there, sear them on each side till I get about 185, 190. My wife specifically said, I want some char on mine. I said, okay, I got it, I'll do it. So we'll see what happens. These things are phenomenal. You get them to the right internal temp and they are so tender, they're so flavorful, so they're so good. Highly recommend them. Um, I've done both bone in and boneless and I like them both you you can choose whichever um, basically they're just cut from a pork butt pork shoulder however you want to call it uh, but they're good phenomenal so we'll go ahead and get this it looks like the charcoal might be getting there where I can close it up and fire it up but we're gonna go ahead and get this fired up get it started we'll be back after this to let you know how it happened you can check out the prep video starting right now <laughs>
So one thing I did forget to mention in the intro, I'm going with hickory wood today. Um, show you, hold on, hold that thought. So this Masterbuilt 1050 is designed to run on charcoal and wood chunks, but I was doing some research on one of the Masterbuilt Facebook groups I'm a part of, and some of them, some folks, will take whole splits and put them down in the charcoal bin and run it completely off uh, splits. I'm not ready to do that yet. So what I've done, I did it once before, I'm trying it again, take one split, this is, happens to be hickory, we're using hickory today, put a hickory split down in the center of the charcoal uh, chute and then pour lump charcoal around it. That way you get a long lasting um, uh, smoke off the split. And then you can also put your hickory chunks or whatever wood in the fire bin, the firebox uh, ash bin as well. Um, so not sure how it's gonna work with the pork ribs, um, or excuse me, the country style pork ribs, but we'll see. It worked really good on, I believe it was a brisket I did, did it on last time, it worked really, really good. So we'll see. Anyway, so we're using hickory wood for this smoke, both the split in the charcoal bin, as well as um, a couple of chunks down in the firebox. So see how it comes out. All right, welcome back to the Grilling with RVH patio. Now that the prep work is all done, we're ready to put the ribs on the smoker. One correction, I did mistake something. The one season, as you've probably already seen on the prep video, it's not called Tex-Mex Gold, it's called Texas Gold. Almost forgot it again, it's Suckle Busters Texas Gold. And I threw a photo up during the prep so you can check that out, but it's Suckle Busters I, I forgot it again, Suckle Busters, Texas Gold. Uh, I will say it does say uh, Tex-Mex season on the bottle, so that's what keeps confusing me. Anyway, let's move past that. Okay, you can see that the hickory, uh, uh, the hickory split in the hopper's smoking pretty good now. So we're going to take the ribs, put them on the smoker, set it, let it roll. Here we go. Woo! And first, the Texas Gold Season Ribs. Oh, Lord have mercy. We'll get those in there. Nice and even. Wipe that little bit off that got on there. One of my pet peeves. Try to keep this thing as clean as possible. Not always good at it, but I try. Okay, and then the Blackstone Teriyaki seasoning. We'll see how that turns out. Take a look at those. Get you a close up here in just a minute. But uh, yeah, we're gonna close this bad motor scooter up. Thanks to Montrose, Sammy Hagar, you're welcome. We're gonna close this up, let it roll. Door switch is kind of sticking a little bit at times, but I'm gonna get on that. I got an extra one in there to replace that with. So, anyway, let it roll. We'll uh, set it at 225, let it run for a few hours, do a little checking on it. We want about 170. Take them off, crank it to 600, and sear them, and uh, get them about 185, 190 finished internal temp. All right, stay tuned. We'll be back after this. <music> Pardon the, stat, uh, the stock audio, I don't have the microphone on, but um, every 45 minutes-ish, we're gonna spritz these with some apple juice. See what, ha see what happens. I've kind of gotten away from spritzing a little bit, but I wanna try them on these country-style ribs and see if there's any impact, any difference whatsoever. So, here we go. All right. 
we'll see. We'll see what that does. I don't know. Uh, I don't spritz much anymore. I used to spritz a lot, but nowadays it's just kind of like, eh, I don't know. All right. Come on back. We'll let those uh, sit for a while. Come on back, and uh, we'll check them out here in a little while. All right. We're getting to that point in time where it's, they're at about 165, 170, and so we want to pull them off for a second, crank this to about 600, 550, 600, put them back on there, get a good sear on them, get them about 190-ish. So here we go. We'll take the Texas Gold, remember that time, and put them on in this pan. Well, actually, we just put them all in the same pan. It's just they're gonna just sit there for a minute, okay? And we'll put that pan over the top, kind of keep them a little, a little warm, okay? You saw it, okay? Then we're gonna take this up. Set that at 600, and we're gonna let it pick it up. See how hot we can get it, about 600-ish, and then we'll uh, throw them back on there, get a good sear on them, take them inside, and eat them. Sounds good, right? Wish you could be here, so sad you can't be. I'm gonna enjoy it, be right back. As you can see, it's quickly picking up steam and getting up to the, hopefully, 600-ish degree level. Really starting to burn some of that uh, dripping off that's been in there over the past, oh, I don't know, two or three hours. So we'll let it get up there to searing temps and we'll get those pork ribs seared. Come on back in a minute and check it out. Got sidetracked and forgot to show you. It's about 570 and we, uh, we put the ribs on there for a quick sear and uh, leave them on there for a couple of minutes, minute or so, flip them over, do a check, see what they look like, and uh, hopefully they'll be good. All right, they've been there for about a minute or two. Let's, uh, let's flip them and see what we got here, shall we? Oh yeah, there's a good, nice char. That's what the wife was looking for. Maybe not that much char. <laughs> let's put these up here a little bit, shall we? Yeah. I don't want to get them too awfully charred, but yeah, you know, you need a good char. All right. Let those sit for just a minute, and then we'll pull them off, cover them up, take them So it's been a minute, another minute. We're going to go ahead and check them and pull them off and think they'll be ready to rock and roll. Oh, yeah, that's a nice char. Yes, sir. You bet. Good looking char on those. Oh, stop it. Good looking char on those. Yes, sir, Rebob. All right. We're going to let that burn off for a little while. Burn all that junk up in there. And then uh, come back and shut it down and see what we got gonna haul these ribs inside man i'm sweating now sorry we're gonna haul these ribs inside and uh let them rest for a few minutes and then we'll see uh, we'll give you the final product final thoughts here in just a few so the final product you can see the char on them what happens when you crank it to 600 and uh we're gonna take one cut open see what it looks like Yep, as Mrs. Grilling with RVH cuts it open. Yeah, not bad at all, a little smoke ring on it. Nice char on it. 